Yeah, you're, uh, you're, uh, good to go. <laughs> you're good to go. Yeah, okay. Um, he'll support on this? Yeah, yeah, sure. Right. And, uh, I, probably he will make I a few just, shots. Just, whatever, however you guys, just give, let me know. Give me the market to here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 just let me know whatever I can do. Or so do. let's start with the casual question. Um, yeah. You started like 21 years of age climbing? Did yeah, I started. in university? Yeah. Why climbing? Why climbing? I mean, honestly, it's just random. It's just, you know, it's, um, I mean, why anything in life, right? I just, I was uh, um, at a, I was at the beach after school one day and I saw these people climbing on these rocks and I was like, God, that looks incredible. Like, I better do that someday. And then I happened to have a roommate who was, um, uh, had a friend who was a climber and uh, they, you know, introduced me to him and I was like, oh, you would take me climbing someday. That'd be so amazing. And he took me out and, and uh, I did my first climb just on some beach boulders, and I was just like, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, I got obsessed, you know? I mean, for the first time in my life, I, like, found something that was, um, yeah, that was, you know, that captured my passion, mm -hmm. and that got me, you know, I never really had that feeling of just being mm -hmm. just really excited and obsessed about something, so. That's it was awesome. the best thing that ever happened to me, it's funny climbing. Have you tried any, any other sports? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, a lot of different sports. I mean, I mean, I started out, like, you know, in, like, just traditional sports. I did tennis and, you know, cross-country and um, uh, running. And and then I mean, now I'm, I've been become really obsessed with paragliding. So in the last four and a half years, I've gotten really heavily into paragliding. Yeah. And, um, and actually this year I started... Um, yeah, competing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah. So I was actually did uh, three um, paragliding competitions this year in the United States, um, and so I'm getting pretty serious about it, and um, and I really just love the sport. Any specific aims in paragliding? Um, well, I mean, yeah, no. There's all kinds of you know. I had the goal of flying 100 miles, and I flew 100 miles, and I was like, well, I want to fly 200 kilometers, and I flew 200 kilometers, and I was like, well, you know, I want to. Do well in competitions, and I did pretty good this year. I actually got on, I got on the podium once, which I was pretty well, excited about. Like, is it the, like a World Cup, or is it a little, It's not quite World Cup yet. Yeah, I'm like approaching that level though. Okay. Yeah, so actually, I'm gonna go um, this November to a, uh, um, a pre, you know, uh, um, uh, World Club, Cup competition in, uh, um, in Chile um, this November. So yeah, I'm starting to get to that point. I'm not quite there yet, but. Yeah, I heard you um, jumped off from the Oyster Bowl, the volcano. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I flew off of Pico de Orozco yeah, yeah. with my paraglider. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Is there any specific aim for another mountain to do this? Type I would of like to. Yeah, I'm, I'm open to it. It sort of just depends on um, partners and ideas, and I have some ideas, you know, for for um, big adventures, and uh, got some ideas for big adventures, and if we, you know, climbing and flying. So you know, maybe someday we'll see. If the moment's right, you know. Yeah. Yeah. When did the uh, filming come into the picture? Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, yeah, so I was, uh, you know, even in high school, like, even before I was a climber, you know, I was like a bit of a photographer. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, wasn't, you know, like I, I did photography in high school, some and stuff. And, and then, um, and then once I became, started becoming a known entity in the, the climbing world, I started, you know, being in films. Mm -hmm. um, I started working with Sender Films. And, um, and it was kind of when I was in their films, I started just watching the whole process and becoming really interested in, you know, just, I just thought it was such an interesting creative process. And I started um, becoming interested in maybe making my own film. Because I saw, like, you know, I was like, oh, I'm always doing these fun little adventures that, where we don't have a camera crew. I was like, maybe if I brought a little camera, I could, like, you know, tell a little story, edit a little video. And I started just by doing that, making these short, terrible <laughs> little films. Yeah, and you'll love it probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, some of my original stuff, if you, like, go down and do my Vimeo page, you'll see some really bad stuff I made. And, and uh, yeah, I just started getting interested in it. And um, around that time, Renan Osterk, who was one of my main climbing partners, was also getting interested in filmmaking and getting pretty good at it pretty fast. And so he was teaching me how to edit. Um, and, uh, you know, I just kind of, you know, went down that road. And just similar to with climbing or you know, now with paragliding where I just got obsessed, yeah. you know. And once I get obsessed with something, I just tend to get really obsessed yeah. with it. Yeah. So I got really obsessed with filmmaking for the last, you know, 10 years, almost 10 years, I'd say. Um, when did you and how did you meet Alex Hunnell? Um, let's see. I mean, I just met Alex. It's funny when you know, the first time I met Alex, he was all starstruck, you know. He's all, oh, I would see you right. <laughs> I can imagine that. Yeah, because, you know, it's, uh, he was just this, like, dorky 
kid, you know what I mean? And we were like, who's this kid who just resoloed the rostrum, you know? And we're like, what the heck? You know? And they're like, oh yeah, he just like lives in Sacramento and he's, yeah, he's just some weird dorky kid with big ears, you know? And I was like, oh yeah, you know, he was, so I just, I just met him in Yosemite and then it was just sort of, I think, just, just, you know, just random, just, uh, you know, just random occurrence, but he ended up being on the North Face team and and we were just like-minded, you know? We came from this, a similar background in climbing. You see Yosemite climbers and with like a soloing background. And so we, we just- Was uh, that funny enough? <laughs> yeah, we, just, we were just like natural partners, you know, as far as, you know, once he was on the North Face team, we would just like start to climb together a lot. Yeah. We went to the Czech Republic together yeah. and, then, uh, and then we, um, you know, we did the Suffer Fest trips together. Yeah. And those are kind of, I think a lot of people know, know yeah. of, uh, of me through those, through those two films. That's what I want to ask about. Yeah. Like the stuff of us, the stuff of us. How did the idea came up? Um, we were so we were on a trip to um, uh, we were in Chile climbing in Cochimo, and at the time Honald had just started his um, his I think he just started his foundation, and so he was like wanting to do stuff with alternative energy, and he was like becoming a little bit I think feeling guilty about you know all the flying and just like all the consumption. And he was like. And we were, you know, just talking about, like, how cool it would be to maybe do, like, uh, somehow the idea of bike touring came up, and we were, like, trying to be, like, oh, we could do something closer to home, have a big adventure on bikes that's, like, self-powered, it's a little more envi environmental friendly, and um, so we just started throwing around ideas, and then we, the original idea was to um, do something in the Cascades, and then when we kind of had, we had some free time, I think it was in June, and... And we were like, uh, it looks rainy in, um, in the Cascades. And so we just randomly chose um, uh, the Sierra instead. We're like, well, we can do all the 14ers in the Sierra. That should be pretty easy. And it turns out we were wrong. It's not easy. <laughs> and that's why, where the name comes from? <laughs> the Summerfest, yeah. So, I mean, I just kind of came up with that just because, I mean, they were sort of in the cycling world. You know, they, they had, like, coined the term just for, like, a hard ride or whatever. And so I thought it was just a, a kind of an interesting term. And so... And so, yeah, I came up, you know, I, I, I do think I kind of um, popular, popularized yeah. the uh, term Sufferfest, yeah. <laughs> it's been cool since, you know, we, you know, then we went on and we did the Sufferfest 2 because Sufferfest 1 was, like, so um, well-loved and, and, uh, and now it's, like, you know, it's pretty, one of the most flattering, I guess, like, compliments I get is when someone's, like, you know, yeah, we, we, we like, planted our own Sufferfest or we did our own Sufferfest, you know, and, like, people were coming up with these... You know, human power adventures yeah. kind of in, you know, inspired by ours and that's that's like very flattering. How many did you have all together? Two, just two. We did the two and then I mean, you know, and then we've climbed um, uh, together, uh, you know, we've done a couple bigger trips since then together. We went to um, Africa together. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we did the, the film Chaos and Lions and then and then now this you know, this the Saint Artica film is yeah. is um, it's playing uh, tomorrow is one of my latest big adventure with Honold and um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. Well, he he did just reach out to me. He's so like, you know, he's I think he's ready to get back to the roots a little bit and do something a little more just fun. And, and uh, so there may be a second fest uh, three. And yeah, the, that was what future. I wanted to ask if there's any specific plans. He, he he threw out some ideas. Yeah, he threw out some ideas for uh, um, uh, for a big adventure. So we'll see. Yeah, he seems kind of interested in doing something. So yeah, yeah so I might be able to. Convince him. You also uh, lived in a van for uh, for quite a while, as, as I, I was. Yeah, I was a dirtbag for many years. Yeah, I was. Yeah, back in the day when it was not everybody lived in their vans. Yeah. <laughs> Why um, and how did it change? Um, I mean, I had I, I mean, for many years I lived in my car just because I had no money. Okay. And I, well, I mean, I had money, but you know, I was just like trying spend. to. I didn't want to spend it. I wanted to, uh, you know, I wanted to climb full time, mm -hmm. and so it was a way for me to be able to focus fully on the sport that I loved and to progress and and also there's just a community of people that were all living that way so it was like you know it wasn't um it was a really nice way to live honestly you know I spent a lot of summers uh in Yosemite and winters in Joshua Tree and you know some of the best years of my life for sure were being a you know dirtbag rock climber and then I just you know I started getting sponsorships started making some money and I was like oh I'm gonna run a room for a few months here or something like that and that was like the start and then and at least I met my wife, and she had a she had an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah, when I knew that. Right. That's when I knew. I mean, that's honest, like in all yeah, truth. And be told, I basically got a roof over my head because you know my my girlfriend had one. You don't have any children yet. No children. Yeah. No plans to have them either. 
No, no plans for children. Absolutely, yeah. or just even. Hundred percent. No. Hundred percent. No. No, no children. I uh, hate children. Oh, I'm joking. No, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I just really hate you. No, I, I don't I hate could, children. I could imagine. <laughs> no, I. Uh, no, people. <laughs> no, I don't. I um. No, I just live. I just like my lifestyle the way it is, and and um. I want you know. I want to continue to. Um, travel and to you know do these sports I love that are very dangerous and so I just don't really see where children fit into that I see. you know I want to have freedom and, and my wife and I want to go off and you know go on climbing vacations mm-hmm. together and stuff and not have to like you know be like worrying about children and stuff so yeah. have you heard have you heard the, the lecture of uh, Leah Holden yesterday I don't know I, I missed it, it. yeah no. because he was always uh, also t- talking about this uh, in yeah the how things change Yeah, yeah, he has yeah. two children now. And now he's risk taking his lower, which yeah. means he goes 2,000 <laughs> kilometers to Antarctica to climb a mountain at the end of yeah, the Yeah, you're like, I feel like, really, your risk tolerance is lower? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I think, um, yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, it's like, you know, it's, it's having, if, if you do have children, you should definitely think about the risks you're taking, because now it's not just... You know, it's one thing to leave your, you know, your partner, your wife, or something behind. It's another thing to leave, like, you know, children. Mm-hmm. Like, they're really dependent on you, and so it's, um, yeah, you should think about your risk tolerance yeah. you know, if you have children. Can you tell us a bit about the, your uh, Clean Mold Line expedition? Because yeah. you've been following, of course, what well, so, I mean, for years, I, you know, I was like, I, you know, I'd done a big, um, you know, a big multi-pitch versus ascent on six of the continents, you know? And also, I was, in my mind, it was just sort of my seven summits or something. I was like, oh, it'd be cool to do a big first ascent on all seven continents, you know? And so, and so I, th- I feel like for, like, about five years there, the, you know, the North Face would be, it'd be time to pitch expeditions, and everybody would be pitching ideas, and I'd be like, Green Mod And they'd be like too expensive, and um, yeah, I mean it's just like one of the most you know expensive places you can go, but that's it's also one of the most um, you know outrageous and unexplored places you can go. And so finally, they it was one year I said Queen Maudlin, they said yes, and I was like what? Come on, really? Come on, you said yes, and so yeah, we finally I got my opportunity to um, uh, to go, and so I put together this team and um yeah so, so it was you who chose uh, the partners mm-hmm. yeah they, yeah so um I, well i kind of i knew um you know i like knew that i wanted to, to involve conrad just because he had experience there and i thought it'd just be classic for him to c- come back and he was recovering from his heart attack and i just thought as a filmmaker i'm all that'll be a pretty good story like you know conrad coming back from a heart attack to do this big expedition and and then um you know i was like you know i was hoping Hall could come but he wasn't sure and He actually didn't want to come. He was like, going to be cold. And me, me, me. He spent a lot of you know, time just being a little bitch and complaining, honestly. <laughs> and, uh, but, um, but yeah, I mean, I knew there was probably no one else that I'd rather be there with, you know. And uh, yeah, and, and then we had uh, Anna Path and Savannah Cummins, who are um, two newer, you know, North Face female, female athletes um, uh, who, who I invited. Um, we're trying to make it less of a... Uh, of a dude fest, you know, <laughs> and uh, so that was fun, and yeah, it was like a expedition, one of the most successful alpine, you know, expeditions of my life, we like climbed, I think, 14 summits, Alex and I, we did uh, eight first ascents, and I mean, it was just like, we would just, we'd climb a big first ascent, take a rest day, climb a big first ascent, take a rest day, we had great weather, and we just climbed our asses off, and that was outrageous, it was so This much fun. This was in the Rio Or the film, yep. So yeah, I um, uh, you know produced and directed and then edited, um, co-edited the film, and it was in Real Rock, um, and then now it's playing here. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as a is the uh, same movie that was in Real Rock. Same, same movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen that. You've seen it, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Because we do the screening in uh, the Real Rock and the Banff Festival, both. Oh, the, cool. The world tours in Budapest, and we are in the organization. I'm the host. Oh, cool. so, oh, nice. Classic. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's always... It's yeah, always, it's always you know. yeah, so yeah, I'm proud of the film. It was like a hard film to make, you know? It wasn't like... It wasn't How was as, it like to film there? Um, I mean, it was cold, you know? You're, all your batteries are always dying and stuff, and it's uh, it's like really a difficult place to film, you know? And we brought... I mean, it was like... We, you know, I brought I brought this guy, Pablo Durana, um, with us. He was the, uh, the cinematographer on the trip. And then, you know, then I just did my classic kind of supper fest style filming on the wall with Alex and and um, you know and, and Jimmy and, and Savannah did the same like just pulling out their cameras sometimes and so you know I, I really like that style of filming more just in the moment real moments you know pulling out your camera and 
nothing nothing like slick, but yeah. something kind of real about that kind of filming. So we, I wanted to have a mix of that with um, uh, with you know more professional cinematography from mm. from Pablo. But when we came back and it was time to like you know edit the film, I, I knew that I was like, oh, this is not like an easy film to make because you had like you know. And I kind of knew from the beginning that with, as we had a larger cast of characters with people, like different people with different objectives, it was going to be really complicated to tell a good story. Yeah. Because um, it's not just about one person finding one thing. It just makes things so much simpler. So it was really, a, yeah, it was a complicated, um, it, was, it was a nightmare to make that film. It was like <laughs> the most, yeah, this is the closest I've come to just wanting to outright quit oh. ever <laughs> in the history of filmmaking for me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was just I was just like we were trying all these things and they weren't working and so in the end I'm really proud of what we created. Uh, I think that's a good film. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a good film. It's a it's it's a good film. It was but man, it was for you should have seen some of the edits, so they were not good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are already into filming. Uh Crystal has won on an Oscar. Yeah. Uh, what does it mean? To, to you as a filmmaker, uh, what is your opinion about that? Oh yeah, the, is, uh, did, did you like the film? Um, free solo? I uh, know, I thought it was shit. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the worst time movie ever made. Give me a chance, should go back to taking pictures. No, of course. I mean, free solo was amazing. You know, it's an incredible film. You know, I mean, I mean to be fair, anybody could make a good film about Alexander free soloing El Capitan. I mean, it's the most outrageous. You know kind of climbing achievement in the history of climbing maybe just as far as just like the spectacle of it so yeah it's, um, and they did a great job you know I mean of with the edit and with everything it's a great film you know and it definitely it was interesting I was having this conversation with someone recently and I was all like honestly probably that's probably free solo is probably bigger for climbing than um, than the Olympics in my opinion I think more people are going to know about climbing or have an understanding of climbing from that movie than, than people will from the Olympics, you know. And it's interesting, too. I mean, it's like a, it's a definitely a different insight into climbing than what, what people will get out of the Olympics, you know. But, but between the two things, between free solo and now the Olympics happening, like climbing is going officially mainstream. And uh, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think I might not like it. But it is what it is. There's nothing I can do about it. So have, you seen, have you seen the World Championships? The uh, yeah, I've been watching some of that stuff. Yeah. And yeah. you think, uh, what's your opinion? Uh, about the format? Yeah, about yeah. the format. The format, how, how the, the, the format is stupid. Yeah. It's like the whole, I mean, well, I, 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 I mean, I like the, I think it's a good part of the format. It's sort of like, it reminds me of like, you know, like in, uh, if you look at track and field, right, they have combined formats. That's good, you know? Somebody who can do it, but you still need the individual format. You know? So you still need there. Should there should be hopefully it just climbing eventually gets more accepted into the Olympics to where you can have a bouldering, a sport climbing, a speed climbing individual um, uh, competition, and then an overall combined or something. Because this whole combined thing is it's it's dumb. Yeah, you know, I think almost. I mean, anybody who's yeah, you know, I mean, like whatever. Like Anders, like begrudgingly, like you know, started speed climbing, but you know, it's just sort of like forcing people to do something that's not really their thing. You know? so it's, uh, they are already separating it in 2024. Uh, are they going to separate there will, it? There will be a uh, combined order and lead and a separate speed. So that makes sense. That's, that's a little that's better. A start, yeah. That's a little better, yeah. They just probably didn't want to do it for the first time. I don't know why. Because But still, even that, even that, they need individual. They need, yeah. they need sport and, and boulder because, I mean, just look at the people yeah. who excel, they're not the same people, right, always, yeah. you know, who excel in those two disciplines, so it's like, uh, why not have a separate and a combined, but, yeah, I, it's cool. It's, I think I'm, they got only one gold medal. They, they could only get out one, one gold medal. One gold medal, I know, isn't that crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah which I understand why they did it the way they did it, but, yeah, but it's, uh, and it's fine, it's, it's a start, you know what I mean? It's, I, my concern with all that stuff is that people are just going to have this weird, weird idea of what climbing is based on just the Olympics, you know? And it's not really going to be a very good understanding of what climbing really is, I think, to, to the people who, who love it, you know what I mean? I mean, climbing to me isn't even, plastic is yeah. like the shittiest form of climbing, you know what I mean, in my opinion, you know? Plastic is like what you do when it's raining, yeah. to me, you know what I mean? Or like when you're, when you're too busy to, to actually go and, and enjoy outdoor climbing, you know? It's not like a... It's, it's training yeah. for real climbing, you know? I always thought, but now it's like people are, people like don't go outside because they feel like it makes them weak. 
you're like, oh, if I go out outdoors climbing for a day, I'm like, I get weaker. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, I'm like, what's happening to our sport now? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Do you th- so do you think um, uh, free solo has done a better job to introduce climbing to the people? Is there any well, no, honestly, I feel, I feel like both of them are kind of, I, I, unfortunately, both of them are kind of inherently um, just like not like really the spirit of climbing that I, I think I would like people to see, you know? It's like they're, it's the two extremes, right? You got like indoor, like super safe, like sterile, kind of. You know what I mean? Like, like it's just it's like a sport. It's not like a lifestyle, right? And then you have this extreme, you know, like risk taking, right? Be like but the real beauty of our sports. There are somewhere in between in the uh, in, in the adventure of climbing, the exploration, the beautiful places that you can go, and, and uh, so. Unfortunately, neither neither of those, you know, maybe in some ways I, I guess I prefer the message coming out of free solo over the Olympics, but, but you know, but both of them are inherently kind of, like... Two extremes. Yeah, two extremes, yeah. yeah. Can we just, can we just see it in a different way? For people like you and for others who love the nature and things that climbing has to be connected to nature, yeah. it might be the best thing that happened to happen in sport, because if we are taking that... If taking how popular climbing is, and all the people would go to the nature, then you with a lot of problems. More people in the nature, yeah, you less opportunity to, to climb, and all this green stuff. And I was saying that we have a lot of people climbing, and thanks God, I have my space in nature. And yeah, totally. Going, and they're just going to the gym. No, I mean there's something to be said for it. You know, it's um, yeah. I guess it's just like when you have like a general. It's just when, like, somebody who's not a climber, right, it's like, when they think of what climbing is, you know what I mean? It'll just be interesting to what, you know, based on these new, like, what will people think climbing is, you know? Yeah. It'll be, uh, you know, maybe they'll think it's just about, like, people jumping all over some plastic wall, or they'll think it's about, like, you know what I mean? Just, like, you fall, you die, you know? Whereas actually what climbing is is yeah. so diverse. And I think people will learn. People will know. And it'll be, there'll be too many people at the crags. It'll be too crowded, and... I'll just go paragliding. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is it important for you uh, what message you um, transmit to people about climbing in your movies? Because you're a funny guy, you like to, yeah. to show adventures as, as fun as they are. Yeah. But is it important for you what they think about climbing or climbers? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important. Like that, um, I mean, it's like I, I guess what I found important, important in my films is to show the the character of humanity, the fun, you know what I mean? It, it, it's like, I think a lot of times people like to, to focus in on like the danger and how extreme it is and and um, I've always um, enjoyed focusing in on like just the humor and the fun and the, the friendship and the and the character, the personalities, the, um, you know, more of the story of, of, of things. So to me that's more important, just showing the spirit, the fun. The friendship, you know what I mean. That's what uh, that's what matters to me um, in, in climbing and storytelling. You know, so that's what I get stoked about. You know, and I hope that comes through. And I mean, here's the thing, right? People might like watch the Olympics, or they might see free solo, and then you know they might eventually stumble onto Sufferfest, yeah. you know, and watch those films yeah, and be entertained. And, yeah, they'll have a good laugh, and they'll be they'll they'll have a different they'll have a different perspective on climbing, you know, and uh, you know so. Certainly, um, yeah, it's a good thing. All that, you know, mainstreaming of climbing is good, I think, you know, well, I guess, I don't know. Maybe it's good. Maybe it's bad, I don't know. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it, you know, yeah, for sure. Yeah. I agree with you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I have a separate question with a separate uh, topic. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, uh, I mean, I can only think about myself as an amateur climber, but sometimes you have, uh, you know, a project it should be working. It's very easy. Yeah. But it just it just don't come. You know, it, just not working out. Just not working out. Yeah. Have you had any project like that? It's like so ridiculously easy, but it's but just, you can't do it. You can't. You do can't it. Yeah, of course. Yeah. No, I've had that experience for sure. You know, I mean, even just like some random like you know like sport climbing project. You know, and I just like keep falling off, and I'm just like the conditions are bad, and the uh, but um. 
mostly I'm just like, say fuck it, and just like, I'm like, I'm like oh, oh well. So you're not, you're not hooked on this kind of thing. Uh, you, you keep doing whatever. Right, right, right. Yeah, like, I, yeah, I've never been, like, I've always been more into adventure climbing, and I, you know, I love the athleticism, and the, uh, you know, I like to red point, and to, um, you know, I've certainly put up first ascents that, you know, took me a lot of tries to do, and, but, um, but yeah, sometimes I've just I've also just walked away and been like, oh, oh well, like you know I tried, it didn't work out, you know, and but uh, so there's nothing like a project like that that frustrates you a lot and is like I need to go back and, and do that. Can you name one? If you I'm have? trying to think. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I worked on this this route on in Indian Creek, this first descent in Indian Creek for quite a long time, and um, I. Uh, I think it must have taken me like a, you know a month and a half or something to climb the damn thing, and it was like a, it would and it would just be like it's it, it should have gone a lot sooner, but it just for some reason like every single time I'd be like you know I'd forget some little piece of beta or my foot would slip or like I'd be like a little more tired than I thought I was at the top or a little more tired at the bottom and it was just like I just kept on fucking it up you know and then I finally did it. And it turns out I mean it, really, it was just kind of hard. For me, and it just took me a lot of, you know, it was just like it needed to be perfect for me to send it, you know, and um, yeah, and actually, and then I, uh, I uh, took Honold out there, and he fell off of it twice, <laughs> did two days in a row, and didn't send it. Yeah, which is honestly probably my which, greatest uh, achievement in <laughs> climbing. Which not that like, I climbed it, but that Honold did not. <laughs> which was this? Uh, it's called um, uh, the Yellow Submarine. Yeah, and <laughs> so it was me was singing all day. Oh, really? <laughs> That's it. Nice. Where is it? I didn't catch it. It's um, an Indian Creek, like to the left of Pinky Bingo. Yeah, it's an Indian Creek. It's like a mid. It's like a track climb, but well, sort of. It's a weird, fucked up thing. <laughs> Climbing on a rats, and you know, it's like a somewhat hard rock climb. You know. I mean, not not like you know, cutting edge hard. You still got a bucket list? Oh yeah, yeah I do. Yeah, I still got things I want to do for sure. You know. Anything you can precisely thoughts in order to achieve? Um. Well, I mean, I'd like to. I'd like to. I mean, a lot of the stuff is paragliding related. I want to do a bull bib in the Himalaya. So I'd like to be able to you know do a big flying and. Um, exploration trip, trip in the Himalaya. Um, so that's big on the list right now. Um, I would, yeah, a lot of it. I want to, um, I want to go back to Antarctica um, and climb there again. I just found it so interesting. Same place, Primo Bay. Mm, you know, thereabouts. You know, maybe not. I'd like to just go and explore the granite there again. I just like really enjoy that style of climbing. I enjoy. I just, that's something I love about Antarctica. Something about it. It's really. I don't, yeah, I think, yeah, it's so beautiful and it's so it's so harsh. It's also dry, which is nice. So you can climb a lot. Um, it's uh, yeah, and it just feels totally out there. Which I, you know, there's something about just being way, way out there that has this feeling to it. I'd like to get back to Baffin. I'd like to get back to the you know climbing the Caribbean again. What would I do? It's honestly at this point, it's like less about that. It's less about where I go, but who I go with, yeah. and just about having good adventure with friends. So it's um you know and good good fun objectives. So yeah, I'm I'm in a different place in my climbing. I don't need to make a name for myself really. I don't need to. Um, not only do I not need to, but I'm just never going to be the raddest guy out there. I don't need to, like, go and, you know, I don't need a peel de lord. I don't need one, you know, I don't want one, you know. I, I, uh, so I don't really need to prove myself or anything, but I do want to go out and just have fun adventure with friends. And I, I would like to go, I would like to combine paragliding and climbing more in the future. That's probably the main thing I'm thinking about. It's just like, how can I combine those sports in a way that would be really interesting, you know? It's very interesting because Adam Yeltsin mm -hmm. uh, is going, doing the same. He's, cool. he's a high altitude climber, but he just started to put the paraglide. He was in the Dolomites and uh, flying. I think he broke his uh, heel or ankle. Not yet. Probably, but anyway, it's, it's fun to see how... how um, high climbers from different parts of the world come to the same idea. <laughs> totally. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it makes... I mean, it's a logical progression, right? You're like, how can I get down, you know, off this mountain? And you're like, there's, you know, faster. Yeah. So I think there's something there for sure, you know. For me, I think it's really interesting, too, that you can travel long distances with a lot of equipment, right? So that's a whole other aspect of it that hasn't really been explored yet. It seems really interesting to me. So, yeah.
now, so we'll see. See where I can take it. Yeah, I've been training quite hard, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We have a monthly.